Welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. We are at the Diversity and Aquatics Conference. Uh, it has been a dandy one. Uh, it's sponsored for the most part by the American Red Cross. And uh, we've got a chance to uh, learn a lot here at this conference. If you guys recognize this gentleman here, this is Ken Rowland. He's a legend in the field of aquatics and he's been very active here. Today we get a chance to see him in his, his skinny suit. <laughs> of course, I'm Lee Pitts. Uh, and, um, Let's, uh, let's have a conversation here at the conference with uh, uh, a board member for diversity in aquatics and uh, get some insight. First of all, uh, congratulations on being a charter member of the diversity in aquatics board and now to see diversity in aquatics come to this level in partnership with the American Red Cross. What does that say to you being a product of the American Red Cross at the highest levels? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Lee, for inviting me. Uh, and I just think that you do amazing work in all that you do. Uh, so just keep on keeping on. Rage on, brother. Give me a high. <laughs> there you go. All right. So now when it comes to the American Red Cross, you know, I'm born and raised here in South Florida. I've been swimming all my life just like you. And, and, and I noticed that in, in, in some of those videos, you had the American Red Cross patch and everything else all down. I mean, all of us had that back in the day. So that brought me back some memories. So thank you so much for that. But you know, they don't produce those patches anymore. Yeah, exactly. Ken, let me, let, me, let me pontificate for a second. I didn't bring that up in my discussion. When I was a little boy, I saw that lifeguards had the patches on their trunks. I was in the diving board line back then when they had diving boards at pools. I think I was around nine years old. We were in line for a diving off the diving board. And while we were standing in line, me and my little buddies, we were short enough to kind of, for this tall lifeguard, we saw his trunks. He had a little patch right there. And I didn't know what the patch meant, but I knew it looked cool and I want one. And so eventually I got some. Me too. I was the same way. I was that little kid just like you, brother. We are contemporaries. And one of the things I just want to say is that uh, I bled American Red Cross. I grew up, uh, you know, with swimming lessons and CPR classes and all that stuff. So, and the Red Cross was a different organization then from my perspective in that it was more volunteer driven in that you had people like yourself or myself that could volunteer and help. Now it's all about everything is driven towards, their, their business model is driven towards the uh, computer. What if you don't have a computer? And that sort of thing. So I, I If you were giving the American Red Cross some advice, it sounds like that would be some advice you would be giving them in terms of cultural sensitivity and reaching a larger uh, group of people. Expound. Now that's the thing is that most people, when we're talking about a swimming situation, swimming situation basically a lot of people say, people of color will say, oh man, that's something that white folks do, right? But the thing is, and the thing is a lot of times people didn't have the money to buy your swim trunk, didn't have the money to take swimming lessons and all of those type of things. And that's why I love your story about those bottles because I did those very same thing. I went and I used to get the bottles and everything else just so I can get in. And I only needed one bottle because it was 10 cents per bottle. I'm younger than you. Plus, I think you said you only had to pay like 14 cents or something, 11 cents to 11 go swimming. 11 cents, yeah. I was listening cents. to him like, man, that's a cool gig. <laughs> I get one bottle, I go swimming, man. Whew. Yeah. And so well, that's the good thing in that uh, back then people cared about you. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you were saying about that lifeguard guy, he cared about you. Yeah. And he, was so, not, he was a modern day Ken Rowling. And, and that's the thing is that now, you don't, you can just come to the pool and somebody's running or whatever and hey, you stop running and stop, don't do this. It's not like they care about you per se, you know? And so the business model has changed where you're going towards something that's not personal, it's interpersonal um, in, in, the, in the way that we don't connect with them. And so that's why I bled Red Cross. That's why I was so willing to do things to help them out is because I saw the difference in, in how it, it saved my cousin or how it saved my brother or how it saved my neighbor in the water. So I saw it and that's why I wanted to get back to that. Diversity in Aquatics is the conference. Let's talk about diversity in aquatics. When people hear the name diversity in aquatics, what should come to their mind? Well, I think the thing about diversity in aquatics is that opportunity should come to their mind opportunity because Plato said 
A man can't truly be educated unless you know how to read, write, and what, Lee? Swim. swim. Right, so swimming is an integral part. It's part of your lifestyle. And for thousands of years, when we were the greatest swimmers on the planet, it was a part of our lifestyle. And I think we're taking the, the wrong approach when it comes to swimming, really. I really think that's the truth here. Because we're teaching everybody to be a Michael Phelps. Not necessarily how to not necessarily just how to survive and enjoy the water and that sort of thing. For example, we're teaching people to swim like this. This makes you tired. What if we teach people to swim the breaststroke? When you take a child and put them in the water, the, that little baby, when he kicks, he kicks like a frog. And so it'd be pretty easy then to do this. Your head's out of the water, now you're moving in the water and you can go from one place to the other and you're breathing, no problem, right? And so, but we want to make sure that you learn how to do all of this stuff first, which is going to make you tired. So we're training you to become a Mark Phelps, a Michael Phelps, as opposed to just, hey, man, you want to have some fun in the pool? You want to be safe? Let's do it like this. And I'm glad you mentioned the word fun, because a lot of times when we're talking about swimming, we spend so much emphasis on drown prevention. We talk about a lot of things that have a doom and gloom to them. And now we've gotten away from talking about the fun of just being, knowing how to swim and all the uh, opportunities that the world have available for you if you can just swim. And that's amazing because like back in the day, I mean, we really go back into the 60s and the 50s, even further back into the 30s and the roaring 20s. It was a lifestyle. Both white folk and black folk did that. Here in the Casino Pool in Fort Lauderdale, which is the, the uh, Swimming Hall of Fame pool, uh, the old Swimming Hall of Fame. And so what, what they did there, they used to have great shows. I remember going there as a kid and seeing the, the guy doing the funny stuff off the diving board and, you know, like a clown or whatever. But he was doing stuff that was just fantastic. And I'm like, wow, he could have hurt himself. And, and maybe it was just beautiful just watching all that stuff. It was pageantry. It was fun. And so uh, and going and seeing those shows made me want to come back and do some fun things around my other pool, and which also got me in trouble, you know, jumping off the fence into the pool or that sort of thing. But, you know, the thing is, you just want to make sure that you take the time to think about the fun aspect of it, but also the safety aspect of it. Um, when we look back at uh, these conventions that have been taking place, we've, we've, we, you and I have attended about four or five of them. Mm -hmm. When we look uh, back at what was accomplished today and you look back uh, five years from now, you, from this particular conference, what do you hope uh, would be accomplished in the next five years? Well, I, next, I think that the next five years are going to be the crucial part for our organization as we grow, as we come out of our uh, middle school years and enter high school, so to speak. Uh, now, one of the key things is making sure that we have adequate people trained. And one of the ways that we can get people trained in the aquatic arena is by this uh, memorandum of understanding with the American Red Cross. Whereas now, the next year, and this is the reason why most people of color would want to try to come here next year, is that next year, the American Red Cross does instructor trainer academies, which actually teach people how to become an instructor trainer like myself. And so it's very rare that you can find communities in need that have that level of, can you hang around for a second? that have that level of, of training, of level of competency. And so one way how you can get that is to enroll into the American Red Cross IT Academy, Instructor uh, Trainer Academy here that would be sponsored next year at our convention here in Diversity and Aquatics. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. At the grassroots level. Let's go to the grassroots level yesterday when we went out to uh, Gibson Park and a low-income African-American community went to a lovely pool. We, put on a uh, water safety festival, Diversity in Aquatics did. Got about 85 kids in the water and gave them some fundamentals and exposed them to a wide range of things. One of the things that I was so impressed at when I was over at the swimming well, when I looked over there and saw my good friend Ken Rowland doing rescue, water safety, CPR, non-swimming rescue techniques, reach and throw and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I know I'm talking over some of you guys' head out there in TV land, but man, it looked like you were in your wheelhouse 
Man, I tell you, uh, that's, the, that's just the thing. I mean, the, I always ask people, do you want to make a difference in someone's life? If you want to make a difference in someone's life, teach them water safety. Because that is a skill that's really, truly that you can pay forward. I can't, I can't even tell you, Lee, how many people come up to me. I was teaching a lifeguard class last weekend. Uh, I took my lifeguard class to this place to get get Mahi Mai because I love Mahi Mahi uh, Dolphin. And as we're standing in there waiting for our food, to, a guy walks in and says, hey, in your name, Ken? I go, yeah. And he says, you taught me how to swim when I was a little jet. I was five years old. And this guy now is a grown man and he's a plumber now. And, and they always think you're going to remember him because they remember you, but they were just little kids. Now they've grown up, man. It's, it's, it's a trip. It happens all the time. Now I'm getting it more often than I ever thought I would get it. Like even on oh. Facebook, on Facebook, they'll find you and say you taught him. You don't even yes. remember him, right? Because you've been the top thousands. Oh, but even that, even worse than that, because like that kid, comes in and you, you teach that kid, and then that kid has kids, and then you're teaching that kid's kids. And so, wow, uh, it just really makes, lets you know how far that you can throw your stone for your own personal legacy. There you go. It's my good friend Ken Rowland, right here at the Diversity and Aquatics Conference. He made a huge impact today. He gave a riveting presentation. He's informing people and he speaks his mind. It's what we need. We need people to talk up and speak for the unspoken, people oh. who don't have a word to, to be able to say anything. And so with us being in these types of positions, we are not here to tell people exactly what they want to hear. We want to tell them what they need to know to be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish on a larger scale, replic replicate what many African-American swimming instructors have been doing for many years at the grassroots level. And this is uh, a classic example, the great Ken Rowling. Ken, thanks for joining us. Thank you, brother. It's more than a pleasure to be here. Okay. We'll be right back.